Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My sister has always had boy issues. It is quite ridiculous. I think it has to do with some self-esteem issues. When we were in high school, she always wanted to get attention. She wanted to have the spotlight and for everybody to love her and like her. But I was the most popular one between us, the more outgoing one. And I didn't really care for those things. I just got the attention even when I didn't ask for it. On the other hand, my sister was a nerd with a few friends. She was quiet, even though she loved to have friends, but she didn't know how to, basically. So I think it may have affected her a little. We went to the same college, but I was in the class ahead. My sister came the following year. As far as I remember, she moved from one relationship to the next. Whenever she got hurt, she would always think that she didn't need to tell me about the next relationship because she knew I would try to protect her by telling her not to date. That was the only way I knew. It may not have been the perfect advice, but it would have saved her. I could see that she should be careful, but I couldn't be overly protective of her because I didn't want her to get hurt. After all, she had a very fragile personality. Now, we're full-blown adults taking care of ourselves. I'm in an apartment living the classic adult life. However, she still has these issues, and moving from one relationship to another is quite disheartening. I don't want her to get hurt. My mom is really worried for her, but there isn't anything that I can do. She is an adult who can make choices for herself, and there's really not much I can do. She would have to make choices and choose her own path. My sister's last relationship is the longest she's had in a while. It was almost a year, and the guy broke up with her for no reason. He just sent a text and said he couldn't do this anymore. My mom and I were left to pick up the broken pieces again. We told her to give it a break and give herself some time. But she blew up on us and said that this was why she didn't want to tell us about her relationships. According to her, we always brought her bad luck. From then on, she wasn't going to tell us anything because when she did tell us, we would put ideas in her head about the guys she was going with. She just blamed us for all her boy issues. And you do my thing. Fast forward some months later. She left with the guy she met and has been dating for about three months and even sent us pictures of her marriage. So basically, she denied us the opportunity to see her get married, and she married a total stranger at this point. It's no surprise that my parents were so disappointed and hurt at the same time that my sister would just up and go get married. We never met the guy, and we know nothing about him. We don't have the slightest idea of what he does and looks like. You would not believe what happened next. After the honeymoon, which was about two months, they returned home. If there is something that I know that my sister got going for her, it is that she has money. Finances are not a problem, so she can afford to do whatever she likes. But with the relationship part of it, she needs help. When she returned to the country, my mom said to have this fancy dinner to meet her son-in-law for the first time, which I love. Then the worst thing happened. The guy she brought home was the one who impregnated my best friend and refused to do anything about it until the child was born. They took a DNA test and found that he was actually the father. He was forced to start paying child support and all of that. This was drama, and the worst part is my sister had no idea that this man had a five-year-old kid. I quickly replaced the shock on my face with some other expression so nobody would notice. When I saw him, 
I had all kinds of emotions and thoughts running through my mind. First of all, my sister is vulnerable. So to tell her that she married the wrong guy, one who refused to take responsibility for his actions, I'm torn between keeping quiet so my sister can finally be happy, but I also know that not saying anything about it is even more trouble and may even hurt her more. So at this point, I don't know what to do. Would you believe that my sister's husband recognized me? After dinner the other day, he got my number and called me, begging me not to say anything to my sister and saying that he loves her and they have something going on. He said they plan to have a long marriage together and all of that. The nerve of him to actually call me to try to make me not say anything to my sister is alarming. I told my sister's husband that he was the worst thing to ever happen to my sister because, first of all, he didn't love her. He was the most dishonest person I've ever met to not take responsibility for his own child. To top it all off, he wants me to lie about it. I could not do that to my sister, and that was the push I needed to actually go and do something. Still. I didn't mean that I wasn't very terrified to my bones of the outcome of this. I could not speak to my best friend about this because I wasn't sure how I would go about spilling the beans in the whole family. I couldn't speak to my sister either. The only other person was my mom and she was shocked, sad and angry all at the same time. And I had to calm her down. You can imagine someone who's already agitated calming somebody who's very agitated. Not the best picture. My mom called my sister immediately and told her that her husband had a child. Still, she didn't believe us and said we just wanted to be in her marriage. We were not happy for her and said we should never speak to her again. She didn't know why she even returned and showed us her husband because everything we touch gets ruined. Mother was furious. She did not have it, mainly because she knew what she was saying was true and probably my sister didn't want to accept that she married the wrong person. After all these years, all that we have been telling her about her relationships actually turned out to be accurate. Instead of listening to us, she made us the enemy and made herself the victim. No matter how you look at it, she is technically the victim. But you get what I'm saying. My sister wasn't joking when she said she would cut us off from her life. She blocked me on every social media and wouldn't let me call her. She did the same to my mom. Can somebody explain to me why we are the bad guys here? We went by her apartment and knocked for a while. We discovered that she had moved in with her husband. Great. So we had to search for where this husband of hers lived and we went to the house. But she wouldn't let us in. By this time, my father already knew what was happening and was so disappointed. But he let us handle it. I had to think of a way for my sister to believe me. I knew I was not lying. So I called my best friend to give a testimony, identify the man, and let my sister know. When my best friend got pregnant, she was in the middle of getting admission to study in Canada. So she just moved and forgot about her life here and hasn't been back home since. Turns out, my sister actually found out that he had a child. Still, she didn't do anything about it because she was already married. She couldn't stand the fact that she had made a mistake. My sister behaved as if nothing had happened, so my mom and I wouldn't know. That is so horrible. I cannot believe my sister would destroy her life because of a man. I don't know what to do with her. She still wouldn't speak to us despite trying several times to contact her. I can't force her, so I'll let her be. After all, you can take the horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. It's her life, and I hope she enjoys it. NTA, that marriage would not last. 
Either that, or your sister would be miserable for the rest of her life. She made her choice, and you tried many times to save her from herself. So move on. YTA. If you weren't all up in her business, she would have some confidence and believe in herself. I have had a similar experience with my family, so I don't tell them anything. NTA. I would never stay in a marriage because of shame. The whole thing was built on lies. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if your sister found out before the wedding, but didn't do anything. I know I sound cruel, but I, 19 female, and A, 22 male, are getting married next summer. My mom, 41 female, and stepdad, 33 male, and my paternal grandparents are splitting the cost with me and A. So my maternal grandma, we'll just call her MG, has not spoken to me in a year due to her boyfriend saying that I treat her terribly. I have never spoken ill about my grandmother and quite frankly, always defended her from her boyfriend's cruel attacks on her. MG also has a terrible hoarding problem and does not shower, change her clothing, brush her hair, etc. Plus, likes to make everything about her. Well, mom brought up to MG that I'm getting married and she wanted to be invited. So my mom brought this up with A and I. I said, mom, I love MG to death, but I don't want her at my wedding. One, she hasn't talked to me since Thanksgiving. Two, she'll ruin my $3,000 pictures because she'll refuse to clean up for the event. My mom told me I need to grow up and this is probably the only wedding of any of her grandkids she'll be able to attend because my brothers shut her out. Stepdad, fiancé and paternal grandparents say they see where I'm coming from but mom called me an A-H, so A-I-T-A? Grandma is completely able-bodied and doesn't suffer from anything that would affect her cognitive thinking. She outright refuses to clean herself and has been like this since before I was born. Yes, I realize that hoarding and her not cleaning herself is a cognitive issue, what I actually meant was she doesn't have dementia or anything amongst those lines. For those mentioning how young I am, my own health is going down the shitter. So, would rather be married to the man I've been with for five years. Before I'm put in the ground. This marriage is more planned than most of y'all's children or even yourselves for that matter. To the YTA because she's suffering from mental illness and you don't care comments. I am a psychology student. I'm aware this is a sign of mental illness. Except we cannot blame it all on her mental illness and the lack of sympathy I've given. She has been like this for 30 plus years. It's not a new development at all. And I, as well as her other children, who also cut her off, have tried to offer help. She has hoarded everything from live animals to rotten produce. Here's a bit of a story about how bad it was when I was a child. I was about one and a half years old and spent a weekend with MG. I was sent with a new box of diapers, clean clothes and toys. I was returned with matted hair, lice, bedbugs and cockroaches, visibly filthy, and had the same diaper on as when I left two days prior. For those who have shared kind words, sympathize with me, and given me advice on how to handle this, thank you. The situation is a lot more than grandma looks and smells terrible. She's going to ruin things. It's more of an I'm having a hard time forgiving her because her issues have caused her child and grandchild trauma. N-A-H If you think she'll be a disruption, don't invite her. Your brothers didn't invite her for a reason. When my brother got married, his wife insisted her grandfather with dementia 
sits up front right behind the bridesmaids. No one was tasked with removing him in case he disrupted the ceremony. He loudly talked about the bridesmaids. She's so fat. That one is so ugly. They were in tears. He chattered like that throughout the ceremony, and no one took him out. We couldn't hear half the vows. If your grandmother can't clean herself up for a wedding, don't invite her. If mom really wanted her there, she'd take on the responsibility of getting her cleaned up. NTA. My husband and I eloped and only invited my parents because he is NC with his. At the end of the day, your wedding is a celebration of love and should only be attended by people who love and support you fully. And GM has shown she doesn't through her own choices. Also, how unfair of your mom to put it on you to invite her because she knows your brothers won't. Just because you're a girl doesn't mean you should be subjected to GM ruining the day. It's sad because it sounds as if she needs therapy, but she was the one who shut you out and then had your mom see about an invite? Like WTF? That, to me, makes it seem as though she is only thinking about herself and what people would think about her not being there when she should be thinking of you. She should have reached out herself if she truly wanted to attend. I think she's got F-O-M-O, LOL. She's the one who left her bed a mess. Now she has to lie in it. NTA, even putting your feelings about wedding photo aside, the fact that she's refused to talk to you in a year is reason enough to not invite her. If she's upset for not being able to have attended any of her grandchildren's weddings, then that's on her for treating them poorly. Additionally, there's also the fact she has bad hygiene, would make other guests feel uncomfortable. Anyone sitting next to her will not be able to enjoy themselves if smells are unpleasant. Lastly, this is your wedding. It's not your job to appease the wants of other people. So if you don't want to invite her, then people need to accept that. I, 25 female, an accidental baby, was seven when my mom, 52 female, married a man, now 49 male. They then had two daughters, now 16 and 10. We're pretty well off when I was young. But two months before my high school graduation, mom said that stepdad left us and also left a huge debt due to gambling. He also took our family savings and even got my college fund. Mom had to give up many things so that she could pay some of the debt as threats were thrown at my sisters. I was 16 then and decided to postpone going to college to work and help our family out. Two years after, I was offered a scholarship at a rural state uni, so I grabbed it to get a degree. I graduated with a high GPA, despite having to juggle my time with my studying while working part-time to live because I don't want to be an additional burden to my mom. I resigned and took a break from work last year as I was burnt out, unhealthy and just wanted to rest. I trusted my savings with my mom, told her to use them for emergencies, and went home to my relative's home. Twelve-hour drive to stay with them as I'm uncomfortable in our house. Last week, mom called me crying and told me that stepdad appeared last May and begged for forgiveness. They said they forgave him because he's still our father and kept it a secret from me because they knew I'll be mad. Duh. What sane person is going to forgive someone who just left his family, buried in debt, and appear after eight years as if he did nothing wrong? Then she said that stepdad left again last month, creditors crashing in again, saying he got debt, and since there's no divorce here, the wife has to pay for it. She also admitted that she gave all of my savings to him because he said that he'll use it for business, but then he left. 
I was livid. I can't believe that the money I saved up for my sister's college fund and my settlement at another place is gone. I yelled at my mom through the phone, told her how could she do this and how much of a fool she is and what kind of mother she is for letting an a-hole throw us in the dirt again. Years of pent-up emotions burst out of me and I told her she was ruining my life. Not enough that they have to also destroy my sister's lives by taking away their chance to have a better life just because she's a lovesick fool. I hung up. I'm still not talking to my mom and my sister told me that mom said I was rude for saying what I said and my sis kind of agreed with it, but that she also needed the wake-up call. I love them, but I don't know what I can do to fix this with zero money. People are threatening to sue us if we won't be able to pay the money instantly. There were no opportunities and my work contract starts in December, but we have no time already. I'm terrified, exhausted, and in dire need of money. I want to cry and I needed help because I just want to tap out already. I still want to berate my mom because she's also at fault here. So, AITA? Absolutely NTA. Your mom could have gotten a divorce to begin with and definitely recovered some of that money, forced at least half of the debt into being solely in his name. Given the circumstances, a judge probably would have saddled him with all of the gambling debt and you'd be done with this. But she didn't. She cares more about being with this guy than about her and her family's financial health. Don't trust her with any more money. NTA, but don't step in to save your mom. Work on your life and just go LC with them. Tell your sisters straight up how much money you saved for their college that your mom allowed their dad to steal, down to each dollar for each account. Don't give your sisters any money for college. Go live your life. Have kids if you want, instead of trying to raise your mom's kids and let your mom take responsibility for her actions. Save yourself. Do be there for your sisters emotionally. NTA, this is basically my mother's story, except my father didn't disappear and my mother would never have accepted him back. Today, he is still living as a parasite without money on the back of his partner, despite his 4000 dollar retirement coming every month. Gamblers are drug addicts. They are sick in the primary meaning of this term. Never accept them back unless they went to therapy and never ever trust them with money ever again. I guess your mother had attachment issues, hence why she did not divorce, even if it's a terrible error. But she indeed needed the wake-up call. She now needs to file for divorce ASAP. You never know with gamblers, he could have savings somewhere and be living on the back of others. And the family may need to file for bankruptcy.